correct answer is you should be looking at the HTTP request. I'll try it myself. OK, we have our form. I click Submit, and boom, here we are. This is actually what we're looking at is the HTTP request. We'll look at the code in a sec to remind ourselves how this happened. But do you remember from our first lesson when we talked about HTTP requests and how they look? Well, here's our uh, request line, get, and then our URL, slash test form, and then Q equals the text we typed in the, in the field. You can see a couple more headers, except and what, what languages we, we uh, are expecting to receive, what character sets are OK. You can see the host header. We're familiar with that one. You can see the refer header. Refer header is interesting. This refers to the, the URL that sent, that sent this request. So the URL of our form is localhost 8080 slash. And the URL we're on right now is you know, slash test form. But this header is helpful for, d for telling uh, the server where the request came from. You'll notice that refer is misspelled here. That's because in the original HTTP spec, the word refer was spelled wrong. It normally has two R's. Um, but it's lived on for backwards compatibility reasons for nearly 20 years now. And this is actually symptomatic of how a lot of things in, uh, in HTTP or on the web are, which is you know, somebody made a decision you know, 20 years ago that still haunts us today. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a side effect of, of you know, when things grow organically over time. Another header we've talked about, our user agent. In this case, I'm using, uh, I'm using Chrome. You can see that here. And a lot amidst a bunch of version information on Mac OS X. Looking at our code, here's what we did. We set the content type to text plain. If, if we hadn't done that, the, uh, the response we were looking at in the HTML or in the browser would have looked weird, because the browser would have assumed it was HTML, and a lot of that text wouldn't have shown up. So we set it to plain, because I knew what we were going to do. Then instead of writing text or writing out our, our cube parameter, we actually wrote out this request object itself, which is the Python object that represents the request, but conveniently it prints out. Uh, very much like HTTP looks, which is uh, not a coincidence. <laughs> so it, it's, it's a handy little tool, though, when you're, when you're writing web applications and debugging. You want to see you know, where something broke or you know, what's going on. You can just print out the request and see. So let's, let's replace these two lines again, back to the way they were, and move on to something else. I'm just going to comment these lines out, however, because we're going to need them for later. So this is how our file was before. Let's move on to a new section.